Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Game on. We just keep on gaming on. I'm lucky. This is Octopath Traveler 2. So, last episode, we were in the sacred forest over here, and we found a light amulet. <clears throat> and we were starting chapter 3 of Hikari's main story. We've gotten all our characters and found Kazan in the arena, rescued the gladiators and started our army, which I think we're going to use later to take back our homeland. Anyways, I actually spent, after I said I wasn't going to spend a bunch of time grinding, I spent four hours grinding <laughs> in this little section of Sacred Forest right here, just running around. Um, and it was fun, I got some stuff figured out about the combat. There's turbo mode, which is awesome, it double times the combat, so it's pretty quick. Um, so. Instead of taking 8 hours, I only took 4 hours. And you can see Akari's level 30, Drone is level 29, Particio is 25, and Cassidy is 29. The reason Particio isn't as high as the other two is because I spent time leveling up my other characters that were at the Taravan, or the Tavern. <clears throat> and that's one thing about this game I didn't realize. I actually like it. Characters that aren't in your party don't get experience and don't level up, so if you want to use them, there's going to come a point where you're probably going to have to stop and grind them up if you get far enough in the story and leave them out of your party for long enough like I did. Like Agnia, she was level 9. I got her up to like 15 in just a couple of minutes. Um, a few battles with her because she was so low. A couple other characters that were super low, Oswald. Got them all above 15 um, in case we want to use them later for something. So, the reason I actually ground for 4 hours because getting them up to a high enough level to get this part of the story wasn't that hard. You can tell the car is level 30 and you only need to be level 26 for this was because our Scent of Commerce quest over here on Totohaha Island, remember that ship that was 100,000 leaves? Um, well, I was making so much money in that sacred forest grinding that I realized, gosh, if I spend another hour or two here, I can get that. And so now we have, if you guys saw this, 102,000 leaves. I'm ready to go buy that ship. But first of all, there's other things we have to do. Also, by doing all that grinding, I got a ridiculous amount of skill points. So let's go ahead and use that to give everybody some levels. And we're also going to, before we even do that, give people jobs that don't have jobs so that we have a whole other skill set to use. Um, because I realized how important that is. Something like Revive. I was grinding and I didn't have a character that had Revive and I didn't have any Bring Back to Life items and so I had to go all the way back to town to bring people back to life. Um, <clears throat> so it's nice to have a character in your party equipped with that. And since they can do a secondary job, there's no reason not to. So what do we want a card to be? Is he going to be the cleric now? The dancer? Ugh. I don't know. He looks kind of silly. I like his outfit so much. I think I'm just going to keep him like that. Don't I? The dancer too, huh? You know, that's not a bad idea for her. I'm going to go dancer for her because that's actually a cool move set that the dancer has. I used it. And he has the... Yeah, I don't know why I have him as the cleric, but uh, I do. Um, we're going to switch to, I guess, the inventor. Even though I haven't been impressed with any of the inventor skills. Might as well. He just has them. And she can be the cleric that has the revive, because her magic is killer. It's fire. Okay, now that we got whoops, new jobs equipped, let's go over here and use these skill points. <clears throat> yeah, look at that. Hikari, he's got 8,700 skill points, and he only needed three for this last one here. So, <clears throat> the last one is in sight. Cost 4 SP, draw foes single target attacks to yourself for three turns. Interesting. In learning this skill, you unlock a new support skill, deal more damage. Oh, that just sounds cool. And so, this, we're going to do so much of this, we're just going to stop and look at what that support skill is as we go, or we're going to get lost here. Increase the maximum damage that can be dealt by the equipping character to 99,999. Oh, that's the damage break, no way. Right, well that's going to be really important. Okay, so again, we can get another one here, which is the last one that just popped up. Brand's Blade, 30 SP, Divine Skill. Unleash an extraordinarily powerful atta sword attack on a single thumb, okay? Let's do it. Oh, we got a, oh, we got a silver trophy, Master Your Craft. 
because we got all the job skills, guys. Now there's just the X skills to get. And we got all of the support skills. Oh, sweet. That's awesome. <laughs> She's got 8,000 points. I don't know why she has more. Neither one of them was ever out of the party. <clears throat> so. Surprise attack. Unleash a sword attack on a single foe. The sooner your action comes during the turn, the more potent the attack. Let's do it. And snare. This her new support skill. The equipping character has a 50% chance of inflicting an attribute reducing effect when taking physical damage. Hmm. <clears throat> cool. So if you hit her, she's got a chance of throwing some kind of like slow or something like that at you. Maybe I doubt it'll do damage, it'll mostly just be a debuff. Armor corrosive. Reduce the physical defense of a single foe for two turns. Let's do that. I got a new support skill, which was... Life in the Shadows, that sounds so cool. Receive additional XP and JP after battles at night. Equipping multiple characters with this skill will have no added effect. Oh, that's so cool. So I wonder if it's for everybody or just her. Uh, I don't even know how useful that is in the end, though. The experience, maybe, but the JP, I mean, I don't need any more now. She's maxed out. She's maxed out. He's maxed out. She's missing a couple on the dancer skills. Oh, but we've got points for this. See, we can use them on this. No way. That is so cool. Peacock strut. Raise the elemental attack of a single ally for two turns. Sweeping gale. Deal wind-based damage to a single foe. Nice. Because there are enemies that have wind-based damage. Or wind-based weakness. <clears throat> Move a single ally's action up one spot. Dagger dance. Unleash a dagger attack on all foes. Cause a curious effect to occur one time. Let's do dagger dances. Throw a dagger character. And then that bewildering grace looks cool. And then stimulate mine as well. Hard worker. In learning this skill, you have learned a new support skill. Okay, cool. We don't quite have enough for the last one. Okay, well that was still pretty cool. And she's got more support skill. So... The show goes on. Extends the duration of odd bending effects ran by the equipped character by one turn. Ever evasive. Enables the equipping character to easily evade enemy attacks. Oh, that sounds really cool. Hard worker. Receives additional JP after battle. We're gonna go ever evasive and switch that with ensnare. Yeah, because we've got Fleet of Foot and Incidental Attack, which is like in Snare, but it does physical damage. So that is a sweet set right there. I don't think we'll change anything on that. It's too bad we can't add like four more instead of just having four to move around. So, cool. Now, Articio only has 4,000. Donate DP, that's what we have to go with. That's the only one that's available. Support skill, full power. This. Completely fills the, equip <clears throat> the equipping character's latent power gauge at the start of battle. Well, that's a really cool one. What else do we have here? Receives additional money after battle. Grants equipping character 1 P BP at the start of battle. When the equipping character is not near death, otherwise lethal attacks will instead leave them with 1 HP. I thought that was really nice. Raises the amount of HP restored to the character when healed. That's cool, but I think we're going to switch to full power. Because he needs a little more offense. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. His last one here, I couldn't get it. His divine skill. Deal non elemental damage to a single foe and receive leaves equivalent to the damage dealt. Oh. That's cool, so if you do like 400 damage, you get 400 gold. Now you're going to start making some money, guys. Yeah, that guy's going to be my money maker. So, Cassidy, or healer, rehabilitate. Grant a single ally immunity to status ailments for two turns. Yeah. Preventive measures. In learning this skill, you unlocked a new support skill. Mm -hmm. She has a slot for one. 
Preventive Measures grants the equipping character immunity to enfeebling effects for three turns at the start of battle. Cool. So they can't debuff you for three turns at the beginning of battle. Now, revive. That's the one we need. Yes, now we're reviving people. Sacred Shield grant a shield to a single ally, reducing damage taken from the next hit by 50%. That's cool. But even cooler, Luminescence deal light damage to everybody. We're gonna do that. And we got a... We got Resilience, which we know what that is. Going Sacred Shield? Sure. Inner Strength support skill. Mystical Staff, Unleash a Staff Attack Man. Prayer to the Flame. Raise the physical damage and elemental damage. De no, raise the physical defense and elemental defense of a single ally for two turns. Yep. Let's do that. Evil Ward. That sounds cool. We're just gonna look at all those at once here. Um, and Mystical Staff, we'll just get it just because we have the JP for it. And that gives us Elfric's Blessing, which is the divine skill. Grant a single ally the ability to act again at the end of a turn for three turns. Only one additional action can be taken per turn. That is really nice, guys. So, for three turns, somebody gets two turns. So that's a total of six turns. Oh. Man, those divine skills are really good. So, support skills. Let's go look at those other ones we just got. Resilience, remember, was raise the HP of the character when being healed. Raise the equipping character's max SP by 50, which is really nice for her. Uh, increases the party's success rate when attempting to flee. Well, that's nice, actually. The equipping character will recover with 25% of their max HP once per battle upon being incapacitated. Oh, that is so good. I think we're going to do that for sure. That has to be switched with something. Or what do we just switch it with? Preventive measures grants equipping character the immunity to feeling effects for three turns. That might be the one we needed to switch. Restores the equipping character's SP when breaking a foe, which is unbelievably helpful, guys. For a healer, because then after every battle, I mean, you're basically going to break an enemy every single battle, no matter what. You get full BP all the time. Or SP, excuse me. So after the battle, you just use her to heal everybody. Hale and Hardy raises the equipping character's max HP by 500, which is really good. Restores 30% of equipping character's max SP and HP on winning the battle again, which is really good. More healing stuff. I think that's really good. So, okay. That was all the skill points and all the divine skills. We just have to get a couple more guys. We've got this all filled out. That was awesome. Now, we're super early. Before we go further on the story, like we said, we're gonna backtrack here. Save our game after doing all that, because I don't want to do all that again. So, let's go do the set of commerce, guys. Back to the island of Tokyo Haha. Yeah. Travel to Tropu Hope. If you guys are playing the game, I hope you're enjoying it. Talk about it down below. What are your favorite parts? What are your least favorite parts? I'm going to give a full review after this. I'm taking a bunch of notes on what I think is cool. Master Fisherman. The damn slugger late again. Oh yeah, we did this one already. Remember we put him to sleep, guys? And that didn't really work. I thought maybe him getting to sleep earlier or getting more sleep might help, but no. So, okay. we're going to go over here to where the shipyard is. <coughs> I can't remember this girl's name, the shipwright. Remember the rich man that couldn't afford it? Such a cool looking ship. Look at that, guys. Pegasus unicorn on the front. Neptune looking proud. Terry, that vessel costs 100,000 leaves. If you want it, you'll have to bring the money in full. Yeah. Okay, or do I have to go like this to buy a photo? Unfinished vessel. A vessel made by the apprentice of a legendary shipwright called a miserable vessel by some. Purchase this item. Yes. Uh 
hundred thousand waves? Wait, does this mean... You betcha. I want to buy that ship of yours. I get it now. You're just another one of them. Huh? You only want it because you heard the rumors, right? That my vessel is the last work of my master, the legendary shipwright. Sorry to disappoint you, but it wasn't my master who designed this ship. It was me. Uh, your point? I'm trying to tell you that it's worthless, unsaleable, just the brainchild of a mere disciple. Everyone I've told that to has, to date, immediately stomped off in a huff. Well, I don't much care who designed your ship, ma'am. Truth is, I fell in love the second I saw it. Even though... She's incomplete? You're no shipwright. You've got no reason to appreciate her. <laughs> you got me dead to rights. I couldn't tell stem from stern. But I know a deal when I smell it. And my merchant's intuition is hollering at me to buy, buy, buy. You're willing to gamble that much money on a mere hunch? When I was just a chickadee, I practiced my appraisal skills by watching silversmiths day in and day out. I learned how to recognize well-maintained tools despite the patina of wear and tear. How to see the calluses on the artisan's hands is proof of their dedication and talent. I can see the same spirit and skill in you, man. You're a first-class artist, or my name ain't Particio. That's why I'm sure that any tub you make is gonna turn out sensational. You're the first person who's ever complimented these shop-worn hands of mine. Well, they say a true masterwork is imbued with the spirit, a voice. Can you hear it now? I'm raring to gallop across the ocean waves faster than a frisky stallion. That's what your vessels show. So please, Sell me this fine ship of yours. No. I already told you. It isn't for sale. Oh, shucks. Not yet, anyway. Mind waiting until I've made it something worth selling? Huh? From here on out, I'm going to work like a woman possessed to finish this ship. It'll take some time, of course. Will you wait for me? You bet your hat I will. Then it's settled. I'll use this money to buy the materials I need and hire a team of skilled shipwrights. I never thought I'd see the day I could finally set out to complete her. My master praised me for the first time when I showed him the blueprints I drew up for this ship. He told me, now I can finally retire with my head held high. He must have cared deeply for you. 
Building this was the final major job he set out to do. But he collapsed soon after we finished the hole. After that, our financiers scattered like a swarm of little spiders. They mumbled platitudes, like the future is steamships, as they went. The truth is, they didn't think a mere apprentice's ships would sell. My master's other apprentices started slipping away soon, too. One after the other. It was ridiculous. Infuriating. Soon, I just gave up making ships altogether. Well, once people get a whiff of this beauty, the investors will stampede back here like a herd of cattle. I hope so. But even if they don't, I'll keep on practicing my craft. There are people out there who will appreciate me and my works for what they are. Like you, Particio. Now then, all that's left is to give her hull a fresh coat of paint and sew a sigil into her sails. Any particular requests? this what you want? Oh, that's perfect! There. She's all finished. Oh, she's even more beautiful than I dreamed she'd be. She's yours now, Particio. Go on, give her a name. A name, huh? Let me see. Got it! From this day forward, I dub her the Grand Terry. What? She may be my ship, but she's got your soul. That's why I gave her your name, Terry. Here's hoping she's the first of many of her kind. Huh. This is a first for me. I'm not really sure what to say. Go and cast off already, you rogue. Let her see the world. You got it. Thanks, Terry. I'll be sure to treat her right. Ship, <clears throat> you can now take your own boat from Anchorage to Realm... Wait, excuse me, sorry. Let me restart that, guys. <laughs> Ship, you can now take your own boat from Anchorage to Realm Over. Board your vessel, cross the ocean at your leisure, embark on adventures at sea. You may even find uncharted islands and discover new creatures. Oh, guys, that is so cool. It's like the airship in Final Fantasy, except obviously instead of in the air, which is crossing the ocean on ships in this game. We've had the boat on the little rivers and stuff. Oh, that is too cool. Okay, so we're going to end the episode here. Look at that treasure chest right out there in the water. Oh, my God. We're going to go get that in a second. Oh, God, guys. Okay, so... Thanks for watching. It's a longer episode than usual. Channel's game on. Keep on gaming on, guys. We'll see you in the next one. We're going to explore a little bit with this ship and then get back on track with Akari. See ya.